Computex time. Friggin' awesome, I love Computex. Taliode champ. Now, why Apple were putting everyone asleep with their conference? Thank God for Computex or Computex as we call it here. Azus are absolutely killed at releases. Actually, I cannot even get through all of them, so I'm just picking a few out. I will cover the lower cost ones and the smaller laptops in another video, so don't you worry about that. But have a look at this. The new Azus ZenBook Pro, 14 inch and a 15 inch. Now the 15 inch is a quad core using the U parts. So that's the 15 watt quad cores. You're getting like XPS 15, Surface Book 2, etc. And of course, the 15 15 inch ZenBook Pro will be powered by the six core eighth generations up to i9 there to 45 watt part. You can get a GTX 1050 in both of them. The 14 inch will have max Q, but the 15 inch will have the full GTX 1080 Ti. Now it'll be interesting to see what my man, Mr. Rodriguez thinks of these new ZenBook Pros because he's actually testing one at the moment. So also thank you very much for your pledge on Patreon. You contribute so much to my channel. I really appreciate it and in some respects so I think I should be paying you. And if you want to support my channel, you like my content, I do have Patreon links in the description. So very interesting. Of course, the killer feature on both of these laptops is that display on the trackpad. It's called ScreenPad. It's basically a second screen on the laptop. I would actually really like to know what you think of it. I love innovation, I really do. I want to see how much it affects the battery life. It doesn't really have a big battery, I'll get to that later, but you can turn it off, so that's a good thing. If you didn't want it for some reason, I can see how it could be handy to have like a calculator on one screen and use it like a dual screen. Be interesting to see if it's any good I think it's much more useful than a touch bar, which is just like Apple's. Um, is the Mac even a relevant product these days? Seriously, they need to update those things. Um, but yeah, the touch bar is more Apple's way of introducing touch into a laptop that doesn't have touch. These already have touch. They have touch displays. Well, some models do anyway. And this is more like a second display. So it will be a lot more useful than a touch bar. So if you have a look at the specs of the 15 inch model, because they haven't released the specs of the 14 inch, I'll be interested to see how much the 14 inch weighs and how thick it is. But anyway, obviously you can get the i9, 4K display, 100% Adobe RGB, and it said something like Pantone certified or something like that. So they stepped up their game with that 4K display. A lot of people like the 1080p because they want the battery life. And unfortunately, it does have a smallish battery. It has a 71 watt hour battery compared to the XPS 15, which has a 96 or 97. Big difference there. So you can expect with the 4K model, you know, you're not going to get great battery life with that. And trust me, I know from experience, all right? Don't tell me I haven't tested it yet. How do I know? I know. Maximum of 16 gigabytes RAM and it's 2,400 megahertz. So it's not the 2666, which would usually ship with these eighth generation Coffee Lake parts. So I'm not so worried about the speed, but 16 gigs, that's a bit light these days. You know, if you've got a lot of apps open, you have video editing, you've got Photoshop, After Effects, a lot of things open. 16 gig just doesn't cut it now. It will be good enough for most users, not if you're a content creator that uses multiple apps. So that's disappointing. Another disappointing point is the micro SD. I don't know why it's got micro SD. If you can fit a micro, you can fit a full size. But on the positive side, you get two Thunderbolt ports by four lanes. The HDMI is 1.4, it's not 2.0. Other than that, it looks fantastic. Looks like a great device. I really wanna see how that screen is. Let me know what you think of it. I really can't wait to get this one in house. Let's move on to the ROG laptops. Let's talk about the ASUS gaming laptops they announced. So there are two ROG laptops announced, two Strix laptops. There is the SCAR 2 and the HERO 2. Now the SCAR is for first person shooters and the HERO 2 is for MOBA gamers, MOBA gamers. Other than that, they're exactly the same. I'll tell you the differences in specs later, but you can see both of them here. And on the left is the SCAR and on the right is the HERO 2. And you'll see that the keyboard layout is slightly different where you have the WASD keys and here you have the keys that are more for MOBA gaming. Other than that, they're exactly the same. The key features here on these laptops is its display. Now, typically an IPS panel will give you a five second millisecond response time. These ones here are first of all 144 hertz, but also three millisecond response time. So we're talking 40% faster than your typical IPS panel. So that's awesome, 144 hertz, 100% sRGB. It's everything a gamer wants. Matt, of course, they're also touting its 
calling, that they have some really good calling going on in here. Well, we will find out when we get it. And thank God, ROG Range Boost Technology. Thank God someone is actually looking into the wireless. I mean, most people use wireless on their laptops. So this is supposed to boost your Wi-Fi connectivity, providing 30% wider coverage. And I think they set up to four antennas, four antennas. So it's better than two antennas you usually get with a laptop. That's fantastic. If we have a look at the specs of these two laptops, you will see indeed they're pretty much identical. i7-8750H, nothing about i9s here. So I think that's what they're going with, the i7. For gaming, I don't think there's a big difference, to be honest there. Of course, you have those killer 144 hertz displays with three millisecond response time. The only difference between these two laptops, other than the keyboard, is you can only get a GTX 1060 with the Hero 2 because most MOBA games, they're not really that intensive compared to first person shooters. And of course, with the SCAR 2, you can get a GTX 1070. Now it doesn't say max Q for any of them, so that is good. 16 gigabytes of RAM is your maximum there. Of course, you get the awesome Wi-Fi with four antennas, 180 watt power supply. But if you get the GTX 1070 in the SCAR 2, you have a 230 watt power supply. Now, when it comes to weight, 2.4 kilos. So that's, I don't know how much pounds that is. It's, it'll be near five pounds, I guess. Up around that sort of area. And it's gonna be 26 millimeters thick. So these are proper gaming laptops. They're not your thin and light ones. They do have the nice thin bezel on them, but they are the thicker type of gaming laptops. And I've always said for hardcore gamers, they're the best to go with those sort of laptops, not the thin and light ones. They're a bit compromised. These ones, they're just that more robust and reliable for gaming that you might play. Some people play eight hours of games every day. So I'd rather be doing that with the thicker laptops, to be honest. So there you have have it the SCAR 2 and the Hero 2. They look like good laptops. I will be reviewing these, of course. I'd like to thank you for guys for watching. If you're new around here, please subscribe. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And until next time, guys, tally ho.